Hey guys, um, welcome to part 3 on how to paint Russian T-34s in the camo, um, camo um, winter camo scheme. Um, sorry I haven't put up a video for a while, I've been absolutely work flogged. Um, I had a spare bit of spare time tonight, I thought I'd um, uh, pop something up real quick and um, continue it. Um, <coughs> As you can see here, I've already gone ahead and painted the inside of the wheels white. I've made up what's called a grey wash. Um, I'll probably show you guys how to do it a bit later on. Um, it's pretty easy. It's just basically a ratio I use of water, shade, black shade, and medium, and, um, and that gives you the uh, sort of the shadows without taking too much of the white and, and staining it too bad. Um, yeah, I'll show you what you do. I've only just um, sort of thrown the wash on there. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you um, how to steeple some green and stuff on it and do the rims and whatnot and give you a bit of a look. But uh, what we're going to do is some of the stowage on this tank. Um, first, I'm going to do the little knapsacks just here. Um, it's very hard, it doesn't come out real good being a white background, white tank, but uh, let's give it a shot. Um, I'm going to use a number two the sable brush. Yeah, you're probably going, oh, well, number two, that's a pretty big brush, but this has got a really, really nice point on it. Um, I look after my brushes. Um, anyone that paints knows that you really have to look after your brushes. Now, I'm going to do this in a, um, a series of three colours the stowage. It's going to start off as a khaki grey as an undercoat. Now I'm going to go down to my khaki and go to Gemo, German camo beige for a highlight and then after that I'll probably just do a mix of um, I, I sometimes use white or ivory for this I might just do maybe a half drop white to a full drop of um, uh, say camo beige just to sort of take the tone out a little bit of the camo beige brighten it up a little bit and that's a very it's an extreme highlight now I, um, I'm not the fastest of painters simply because there is so many um, things I go through um, doing this so first off what we're going to do uh, just put a little bit of we're going to put a little bit of khaki grey into my mixing palette here. Um, I'm not going to really water this down. Um, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Um, in this particular, I'm not going to worry about it in this instance. But um, basically, all we do is we um, just apply the the khaki grey, which is the dark khaki, to the knapsacks on the side of the tank, which is the stowage. Um, this is when the, the tanks will start start to pop um, just by doing a couple of different colours now I've only got three colours on the tank at, at the time being excluding the, uh, the black undercoat um, so it's um, once you start getting a few colours here and there, that's when um, the tank will start popping out at you. Really start um, looking good. Now, um, this is by no means what I call a professional um, A plus paint job, but this is um, I'm doing this to a, a high quality tabletop standard. But in saying that, if I wanted to, I have done them before for painting competitions and stuff where I've gone the whole hog, painted every rivet um, and stuff like that. I'm definitely not going to do it here. About 300 friggin' episodes otherwise. I'm flat out getting out four episodes. So, um... Pretty basic. I'm probably boring for you to watch. He paints some Russian knapsacks on the side of a T-34. What? 
What else could you be doing with your time? Um, and that's that. And while that's drying, um, I'll just give me brush a quick wash. Now, I'm going to use chain mail on the back of the air grids or the air ducts on the back of the tank here. Basically, this is just like a giant um, on, the, on a T34. It was the uh, just like some mesh across the engine there to protect it from dust and that had like filters and stuff in it. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use chain mail. I'm going to water it right down so it flows. Um, anyone that uses chain mail knows that when you water this down it just seems to go the tiniest little bit. just goes for miles. Um, so and the reason I want to water this right, right down is because this isn't the colour I'm going to stay with to start with. This is the base coat and I'm going to be applying pigments to this. And when I start putting the black pigments over this chain mail, it um, still holds as it's um, a mesh type material. and. Um, and I don't lose any of the detail when I water it right down as well. That's the one thing with Flames of War scale. It's very, very easy just to slip up and fucking lose all your detail. It's a matter of um, a little bit thick here, a little bit thick there, and you're done. Saw blade. Uh, I probably w I don't generally use chain mail for the saw blade, but I'm going to at the moment um, simply because me. Um, Gunmetal, which is a Villaggio range, is in the shed, and I can't be fucked going to get it. So um, we're just gonna paint the saw blade. Why they had a saw blade on the side of the tank, I'd never know. I understand for cutting logs and making tank traps and whatnot, and doing all sorts of things. But I mean, yeah. Anyway. Um, and I'm going to paint this 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 tow cable or whatever it may have been used for. But before I do that, I just noticed that khaki's dry. I'm going to use uh, brown shade. I'm just gonna I'll just bring it over here and we'll have a bit of a look. I'm just going to pop a little bit into the to there, and I'm going to use my my little eyedropper thing here. And I'm just going to put a half drop of water in, thereabouts, and some, uh, let's see if we can get this here, some flow medium, um, just to help it, just a tiniest little drop like so. And basically that's how I make my grey wash as well, just using black. As you can see it goes to a, a milky, it doesn't stay clear like water would leave it goes to like a slight milky colour. That's cool, that doesn't come through, so don't stress. Um, and I'm just going to paint this over the top of this. Um, this uh, knapsacks to get into the crevices and bring it out a bit. Sorry guys if I'm coming across a bit sniffly, I'm sick as shit. Which is good because I'm going to try and get tomorrow off. Anyway, um, and that's that. Now um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a, like a steepling brush and I'm going to quickly show you how to do the tracks, the uh, track boot wheels. I'm just going to put a little bit of Russian green into a, my mixing pot and um, basically I just got myself a flat uh, it's a sable it's a sable flat brush but I really like it for dry brushing and stuff like that um, so but I'm gonna get here and just steeple that out a bit like that and pretty much I'll just do one wheel to show you um, it's just a matter of steepling it especially on the on the um, uh, the little the hub nut. I'll do this one as well. It doesn't take long. It's just fucking thrash around a bit like that. 
Um, but the key here is let's I'll show you. And this is why I use a flat brush. Paint. Uh, try and get that in the focus. I'm really got to get a new camera. Okay. Um, Like that, that the uh, the hub. You want to paint that green. That's why I use a flat brush because you can sort of get in there and sit the the flat part of the bristles straight over the hub and bring that around like so. And you're not getting any on the black. And if you do, guys, it's like I've got a little bit uh, just just down in here. A little bit, um, it's easy enough to clean up, and that's pretty much how I do the wheels. And this is why I paint this track part black first because Jesus is a hell of a lot easier getting in with this color on um, than the other way around trying to paint the black into the little boots. I mean, I've, tr I've done it, I have done it, it's a nightmare and it takes forever. Not, not to mention, um, I don't mind the background being a little bit blacker. And it gives it a bit of depth, but you know, it is a personal preference and it is personal opinions. It's just, and that's that's pretty much all you, all we do here. Just sort of smash some of them. Doesn't really matter if you go fucking completely green just about on one of the wheels because um, this is where the paint wore the most. So just like that, and that's that is exactly how you do the the wheels. That's that's all it is. Basically, paint it white, just using um, any white you want. Making up your grey wash, which I will show you in a future episode. Um, painting your wash in and then going back over and steepling your green and then getting some sort of a brush whether it's a flat brush or a normal brush doesn't really matter and painting the rim f solid green simply because that, that would have been worn and then once I apply all my pigments and everything like that it's it'll really uh, really start uh, popping out popping out then anyway so um, now this here the knapsacks. I'm going to put it. I'm going to do it here. I'm going to do a. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, this is a dot of khaki grey. I'm going to do a dot of khaki and a dot of camo. I don't know how good that's coming out, but can, if you can see the consecutive colours how it's dropping from the dark to the medium to the light then I'll put another drop of khaki like that um, as you notice that was a bigger drop and I'm just going to use um, some white and I'm going to do a half drop uh, there like that just a half drop full drop half drop um, so the way I like it and I'll um, mix that up in a minute but before we do that um, Let's get this happen. I'll zoom in just a fraction. Let me camera fucking out. Okay, we're going to use the khaki, the uh, khaki grey, which is the dark one. We're going to dry brush this. And this is using this flat brush. This is tremendous for this sort of work. Okay, so. You notice. <coughs> pardon me. You'll notice that some of the, the wash is still a little bit damp. That's kind of how I want it. Um, so this actually is a dry brush, but it'll actually blend. Um, now we go into the khaki. Against the grain, I've, I've done videos before explaining all this in other videos, but when you dry brush, you want to go against the grain um, if that makes sense at all with the um, so the actual the shit, um, so the actual raised areas pick up all the 
um, the pigment and give you that, that lighter effect. As you can see now with the two going from khaki, grey to khaki, it's starting to leave a darker recess in here. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to drop a, this colour. This is camo beige. Um, and I'm going to just Then I'm going to mix this here. This is my mixture, and it's just it's just dropping again, as you can see. And basically, that's what I do through the whole um, just for the whole lot of the stowage is that I'll do that for the knapsacks, cloths, and stuff like that. Now this is the same technique. I also use for my the MO pouches and stuff on the Russians. Now I've done that. I'm just going to pop a little bit of white because I was a little bit messy here. And I'm just going to just hit in where I hit the tank. That's it there. Um, let me have a look here. Come on, focus, please. Um, as you can see, it's just definitely looks better in the flesh. But if you can sort of get the um, the feel of the different colours layering up um, from right up at your eye point of view. As you can see, the barrels there. I've just got to clean the barrels up. That's just easy enough done. You can just drop a little bit of paint around that, re a little bit of green, it's real easy. Um, I was probably a bit messy about it. I already cleaned that bit up in there and you can't even really tell. But, um, and th that's it. Um, it's quick, it's simple, and from down on the table, down at this type of view, um, my camera won't pick it up, it, it actually looks really good. Um, so, um, that's that. Um, I'm up to like 18 minutes. Um, it definitely takes longer than what I realised. Um, with that, I'll um, and at least we got the wheels done as well, um, which is really good. Uh, so with that, I'll leave it at that, guys, and um, hang out for part four. I'm hoping to get this into five parts. Part four, I'll. I'll um, pre-paint the tracks and everything and just tell you how to do it because it's going to be boring me just sitting here and painting a friggin' track. So I'll pre-paint the track and stuff like that. So part four will be just explaining how I did the tracks, how I do the tracks, how I do some of the other stowage like the chain cable which I'll show you which is basically just mithril silver or chain mail washed with a black shade. Very, very carefully washed. Uh, different pieces on the tank that are metal and that, just bringing out different colours and stuff like that. And um, and then um, I'll show you what pigments I use in the part five and how I pigment it up, and and that's it. It's um, it should be done. It's pretty basic. It's um, it's not a, um, a super rocket science uh, tutorial, but it, I hope it helps. Cheers.